Well, uh, hello everyone, this is Peter Brandt, and uh, I'm here with you today with a video version, once again, of the Factor Bitcoin Live report for September 5th. Thank you all for uh, good comments you've had regarding the use of a video presentation as opposed to the old printed version. Uh, keep in mind that in my generation, we're people of uh, printed copies. And so you may hear me rustling as we go through here on the printed copies that I have. I just can't, uh, I can't go completely digital at this my age. I still use paper and well, I'll present the video to you. I've got some backup paper that I may be referring to. So you'll hear some signs some signs of that, and so I apologize in advance. Um, I wanna take a little bit of a step back on Bitcoin today. Uh, this is gonna be a longer video than it's been in the last uh, several weeks. I'll probably, I may go as long as 25 or 30 minutes because what I wanna do is uh, reset the clock, so to speak. I'm gonna step back and really take a look at, uh, at Bitcoin from a bigger perspective, but more importantly, I wanna take a look at my involvement in Bitcoin uh, from a bigger perspective, why Bitcoin? Why am I interested in Bitcoin? What's my involvement in Bitcoin? How do I think about Bitcoin? And so I, I want to cover a couple of those things in the process. And so it's kind of what I'm doing in Bitcoin and why, but it's also what's Bitcoin doing and, and how do I view that? And uh, so that's uh, where I kind of want to go. And, and keep in mind, many of you know, I've said this before, to me, Bitcoin is crypto and crypto is Bitcoin. I know that everybody has their favorite little uh, altcoin or even macro cap coin other than Bitcoin. Uh, but just keep in mind that for me, Bitcoin is crypto and my focus is on Bitcoin from time to time. I may point out uh, a chart of, of one of the other coins uh, from time to time. I may even trade some of the other coins, particularly the macro coins. But for the most part, Bitcoin is my world when it comes to uh, the world of crypto. And it, yeah, I want to give you my perspective, and I've presented this before, of how I think about Bitcoin as a trader. Uh, in my view, there's a 50% chance that Bitcoin will trade at 50,000, 100,000, you know, you name the price. I know people throw million dollar Bitcoin out there. I don't know about that, but, you know, I can definitely create a case for $100,000 Bitcoin. And part of that is that Bitcoin becomes, you know, a universally accepted store of value, which it's not currently. Uh, you may argue with me on that, but, you know, I could go into more detail as to why I don't believe that's true. And that Bitcoin become, would become more of an accepted currency unit, a, mean, a means of resolving international global finance trades, you know, perhaps even included as uh, one of the global reserve currencies. I mean, that, that's the best chance. That's probably years out, but you know that would be uh, at the upper price range. These are things that would happen and that there'd be a 50% chance that Bitcoin might become basically worthless. Obviously, it will never go to zero. There'll always be some interest in, and, uh, in, in hopers, but, but basically, uh, basically worthless, whether that's $1,000 or $500 or whatever the case may be. And so as a trader and investor, I look at Bitcoin and say, OK, how do I capitalize on the upside and at the same time protect myself on the downside? What mechanisms do I have to put in place uh, to do that? And, and part of those mechanisms is, is, is really related uh, to how I understand the market from different time frames. And, you know, of course, a lot of you have seen my comments on Twitter. I get a lot of grief on Twitter. You know, people say, well, you know, you're a $100,000 bull and then you're a $1,000 bear. And will you make up your mind? And, hey, I'm sorry. You know, people on Twitter can't accept the fact that I need flexibility and how I think about this equation. Uh, that's really not my problem. Uh, you know, I know what I have to do to capitalize on a potential upside move at the same time considering all alternatives. And, and that's what I attempt to do is look at, uh, look at things from, from different angles and try to figure out, okay, where are we? And part of where we are um, here is, is this, that Bitcoin has been a, char a bit of market parabolic advances. You see that we had a parabolic phase in 2010-11, Another one from 2011 through 2013, late 2013. And of course, another parabolic advance from 2015, 
lows up through the December uh, 2017 highs. And, uh, you know, my thinking is that we could be entering yet another uh, and the fourth phase of bar parabolic advances in Bitcoin. And, and, of course, you look at the channel that I have drawn in on this chart, and markets tend to trade in channels. That's not unusual, but uh, this is a log scale, and uh, the upper boundary of that channel would come in here in the next year or so at, at right around $100,000. Also note that from these parabolic advances, we've had, you know, 85%, 80 to 85% corrections in each case. We had one here, we had one here, we uh, uh, had one here basically. And so that's the history of, of Bitcoin parabolas is we go parabolic and then we have an 80% correction, a wild, wild market. And so I'm going to take a look at this fourth parabolic phase, and uh, I want to point out some nuances about the parabola itself. There's nothing magic about a parabola. It's, it's like any other chart construction. It is subject to redefinition, is subject to modification, is subject to, to looking at it from, from a different way and having it uh, change its face a little bit. And this is the... The, the parabolic curve that took place on Coinbase, uh, GDAX, uh, from the December 2018 low through uh, the recent high. And you can see on the daily chart that we broke a parabola. And so we come in and say, OK, we've broken a parabola. If the rule of an 80 percent correction is true, that would indicate that we could correct Bitcoin uh, back under 5,500, we could see that kind of a decline, and that would be an 80% correction of this parabolic advance. However, if you look back, for instance, at the advance we had in Bitcoin 2015 through 2017, we'll see that, uh, and I'm not going to go back here, I've done that before, but during that advance, we had some daily chart parabolas be broken and not have 80% uh, corrections, and then the parabola is slightly redefined. We get a new uh, parabolic look at it. That does not mean to say that we should discount any violated parabola. We should always take a violated parabola with great seriousness and assume that we will get an 80% correction until we have the evidence that perhaps we are in a phase where the parabola will take a more gentle curve. And in fact, if you're a long-term bull and a Bitcoin maximalist, you want uh, this parabolic phase to be slightly modified because it will provide higher long-term targets. But let me just take a look. This is Coinbase. This is the same parabola using the same mathematical formula, but just slightly different price levels, slightly different lows in the case of Bitstamp. And we have a parabolic advance that really could be uh, 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 corrected down in the sub 7,500 level and still have the parabola intact. And so, you know, I am for the time being going to say this is the parabolic advance on a daily chart that's going to matter. But at the same time, I'm not going to be dogmatic about an 80% correction of this parabolic advance because we could have something more like this in store. And so uh, that's kind of where we're at. Now, let me, uh, let me turn my attention here to, um, to a whole different set of charts. Uh, bear with me for a minute, but I want to I wanna turn my attention to, to my charting platform with uh, Trade Navigator Genesis, which is the trading platform that I use for charting as well as for entering orders. But uh, it, this is how I enter orders. I can enter orders in futures. I can enter orders in stocks. I can enter orders in, uh, in, in Bitcoin. I can enter orders in spot Forex, all off of this platform. So this is what I use. It's what I've used for years. It's what I'm used to. But I just want to point my, and, and I ignore this green line for the time being. You'll see how it comes in at, uh, the next chart. But I want to pay attention to the orange line. Hey, I use an 18 bar moving average, whether it's a daily chart or a weekly chart. There's nothing magic about it. I haven't optimized it. It's just something I've always used that I have found has worked for me as a proxy for a trend. 
nothing magic about it. It's just simply I can look at a movie to average and I say this is probably the path of least resistance. And you notice that during the 2015, 2017 bull market, uh, the market came back and retested that moving average numerous times. But at no point did this moving average roll over. Now, uh, I've described in some documents what I mean by roll over or turn negative. I won't at this point. But, but simply pointing out that we, we retested test, test, this moving average actually even came through it, but never seriously closed below it. And what we have here now is we have retested it again. And so just as this moving average su provided support throughout this period, will it provide support again? And if I'm going to take a long-term bullish view and believe that any period of uncertainty on a daily chart is going to be resolved in the direction of the weekly trend, I would have to say there's a good chance that we can hold that this retest has occurred we retested it and found support and we should perhaps dig a little bit lower below it but we will consolidate here and move up uh, and, and so that's the position i'm going to take i mean until proven differently that's the way i am thinking about it uh, but yet i want to see some more signs that we are going to hold this moving average to the point where i can increase an ownership position in my longer term Bitcoin investment program for which I have some capital uh, put away for the purpose of, of employing what I'm employing in the Bitcoin uh, world here. I'm going to take a look here at a daily chart and point out a couple of things. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Coinbase, so this is a GDAX chart. Uh, I want to show just a couple things here. Again, in the orange, we have an 18-day, 18 18-bar 18 or 18-day 18 moving average. Um, during periods of consolidation, this is a whippy thing, and it provides a lot of misdirection during a, during a choppy period. That is the 18-day or 18-bar, daily bar moving average. Well, we'll you've seen uh, during this entire advance, the 18-bar moving average continued up. And so... It was a solid indicator during this entire advance, finally turned down on July 14th, and we've seen it go down, go up, go down, and it now is starting to turn back up. But yet, I would not necessarily want to just constantly position myself in the direction of this moving average as long as I know we're in a choppy period, and indeed we are. We're in an 11-week triangle is being formed. Now, the green line I do want to point out in this chart because this green line is basically the proxy for the 18-week moving average that I pointed out in the previous chart. You can see how it came, and it held support down here. And now the market has bounced back up above the 18-day moving average, and I'm going to be looking for some signs that it will consolidate before I start increasing, uh, increasing my stake. Now. I, I, there is a word of warning that I want to give here, and, and that is that from this consolidation period, whether it occurs soon or whether it drags out a little bit longer, I, I think this consolidation period will launch our next intermediate trend in Bitcoin. And uh, what might that look like for us to have an upside resolution? or in other words, continuation of the bull market. And there's a couple of things I'd be looking for here. One would be that these prices remain above this 18-day moving average. It may come back and retest it. But at some point, we have to see an upward uh, explosion in price that takes out what I've identified as the August 7th high at 12,525 is that we can get a wide bar, a wide green candlestick bar that moves above that line and closes there. That's one thing I'm going to be looking for. Another thing I'm going to be looking for is the possibility of divergence in Bollinger Bands. Now, I am not show, showing you a Bollinger Band chart here. Uh, many of you have access to that. What I'd love to see is the B band squeeze. They've started the squeeze. They're, uh, they're converging at the present time. I'd like to see them tighten up and even tighten up to where they were back during this consolidation. 
uh, that launched uh, the, the early April breakout of an ascending triangle on the daily chart. I'd like to see them squeeze up to that degree. Of course, they squeeze up. You have a wide body bar breakout of this consolidation. You move above 12, 525. Bollinger bands uh, not only expand, they actually diverge with one going up, one going down. And we see large volume on the breakout. You notice that we have had decreasing volume. We had a large volume uh, blow off here in late June. And just let me uh, make a point that you can look at in your own weekly charts or daily charts. Big slugs of volume usually indicate one of two things. Big volume is either, is either starting volume or it's stopping volume. And in this case, we see these two big green uh, volume days back here in early April. Big volume slugs, starting volume. We saw these big volume days that took place second week of May. Again, continuation of the trend. Then we came in here in late June and had big volume enter the market. That was stopping volume. I would like to see any breakout of this uh, uh, congestion area take place on large volume. And so that's what I'm looking for. Wide body bar, take out of the 12.525 level, uh, ex expanding, diverging uh, Bollinger Bands on big volume. That's a sign to me that we're back consistent with the idea that we're in a fourth parabolic advance, uh, that the, the violation of the parabolic Bollock curve that we saw in the Coinbase chart can kind of be ignored, and we look for whatever low takes place before we break out as a next touch point in a to be drawn parabolic curve, which will define uh, the market for the period of head. Now, uh, I also want to point out, and I'll show a chart in a minute, that we can look at this period since uh, the June 26th high. And really, it, it it better meets the definition of a descending triangle. Um, we just redraw the lines. We ignore a couple of these spindles, which basically uh, I think it's fine to ignore. And in fact, we have a descending triangle. Descending triangles are more often than not, in fact, about 80% of the time, in an indication of a distribution uh, by strong hands and a subsequent decline. What kind of declines would we look, we'd be looking at? The descending triangle itself has a target of 59.76. And then the 80% decline out of the Coinbase parabolic advance would give us a target of 52.76. Again, nothing magic about these price levels. Targets are just broad targets. They're, they're not something that, that have magic that you go down and you cover shorts necessarily at a target level, although I do that. But there's nothing that would say the market has to turn once it hits a target level. Uh, they're, they're general guidelines at best. And, and so I don't really mathematically precisely define target areas. And so let me, let me take a look at this again. And I think uh, you can see here, uh, going back uh, to, the, to, the, to the bit finance chart, you can see how this descending triangle is taking place where you, you cut through a couple of these spindles and all of a sudden you have a flat lower boundary, a horizontal lower boundary, very characteristic of a descending triangle. So, you know, we're in this period of uncertainty and consolidation areas are just, they're agonizing. And, you know, I always warn people against of uh, jumping in every time we rally within the consolidation area, blowing back out when we break into consolidation area. Consolidation areas uh, are by design intended to take money away from people that were correct in the trends. And so one always has to be quite cautious in, in not reacting to interday or day-to-day -day advances and declines and thrusts and declines in consolidation areas because a consolidation area by default is, 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 uh, is a market that is consolidating. It requires big inertia to move out of that. And so one always has to protect capital that one has earned during, uh, during a trending period quite carefully during, during these type of periods. So let me just kind of start bringing this thing into a close. Um, Covered this chart, covered this chart. And by the way, we will put up on uh, 
Bitcoin Live website uh, hard copies of this presentation. So you'll have those to refer to if you like. Uh, here's kind of uh, the stoplight look at Bitcoin. Weekly trend model remains up. That's the green line. Daily trend model, that was the orange line, had been down, has kind of turned sideways. And I'm going to keep it sideways for the time being, uh, no matter whether that 18-day uh, moving average jogs up or down, as long as we remain in this consolidation area, I'm going to declare it as a neutral weekly chart model. Uh, remains up in that I still believe there's a chance that we're in this fourth parabolic phase. Daily chart model remains sideways and will remain sideways as long as uh, we remain within this symmetrical triangle or possibly on a neutral side, a descending triangle. And so that's what I'm looking at. Uh, again, here are the key points. I've covered all of these. Uh, there'll be reminders for you if you want to print this out and hard copy or stick it on your Kindle or something like that, that uh, you can go back and take a look. I think price action in the days and weeks ahead will be important because we're in a period of indecisiveness. A symmetrical triangle, remember, is the grand definition of indecision, of uncertainty. That's what a symmetrical triangle tells you. And that's the best case right now, that we're in a symmetrical triangle or period of indecision. And there will be signs that that period of indecision will be resolved by an upside move. I tried to show those to you. And of course, uh, on the downside, it's we have a descending triangle, which should be resolved on the downside if the labeling of a descending triangle is correct. But again, uh, we're looking for clues. I don't want to jump the gun during this consolidation period. I want to look for clues possibly to add to a position that I have on. And I'll go over this again. I have not made a change in my factor long-term Bitcoin portfolio since August 13th. And so that's almost a month ago. And again, uh, for people who want to jump in and out of Bitcoin every day, what bits, what's Bitcoin going to do today? I need to buy Bitcoin today. I want to sell Bitcoin today. I don't have that urgency. In fact, I haven't done anything in Bitcoin in this portfolio in, in almost a month. But this is where I'm at. Uh, per $1,000 of uh, money that I've allocated to this, I have 340 uh, on the long side. And, and I've broken down that money, as I've talked about many times, into these various buckets. And so different things on the chart, either in terms of chart patterns, weekly or daily, or in terms of trend models, weekly or daily, or in terms of just kind of a discretionary feel, uh, will will allow me to kick these uh, buckets into place and employ the capital. But for right now, you know, I'm I'm very comfortable basically being underinvested. I don't want to be flat as long as the weekly uh, moving average is up, as long as the, week, the daily moving average remains up above the weekly moving average. Uh, I'm very comfortable with 34% of my money employed. Uh, should that daily moving average roll below the weekly moving average and the descending triangle be completed, uh, you will not see uh, yellow in, in, in both, of these, uh, both of these blocks. I doubt that I'll go completely flat and I will never go short Bitcoin, at least in this dollar allocation. Although in my trading portfolio, uh, there would might be a consideration to short the CME contract. I've only shorted the CME contract once in this history. It's uh, and that was November of uh, 2018. It's a bad contract, and so I'm not eager to short Bitcoin. But I potentially could be flat in this dollar allocation, and so uh, that kind of sums it up for me. Um, thanks for staying with me during this uh, this during this presentation again. Uh, we will post uh, this PDF online uh, for your printing and review once again. So uh, for Factor Bitcoin Live, this is Peter Brandt, uh, and this is, uh, this is Thursday, so have a good Friday, uh, have a good weekend. And if something uh, happens to uh, make me change my mind on a shorter-term basis relative to some of the technicals I presented, I will post an alert on Bitcoin Live. So we will talk to you all later.